All right, so this was a station rotation question. I would like to go over it uh, again because it's good for us because then we've got um, then we've got an ellipse graphed and all that fun stuff. Okay, so with an ellipse, remember from last week. We start with finding the center, okay? So if I'm going to find the center of this ellipse, I would look at, and it would be opposite of x, so that's going to be positive 1. Opposite of y, that's going to be negative 2. So the center of this ellipse is at the point 1, comma, negative 2, which is right there. Agree? Love it. Then, because it's an ellipse, I look at the number underneath the x. I take the square root of that, and that's how much left and right I go. Okay? So on this one, I would be going left and right 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then, I look at the number underneath the y. Take the square root of that, that's how much up and down I go. 1, 2, 1, 2. That then allows me to uh, draw in my ellipse. That's like perfect. Nice job. Six. I always start with the four corners and just do because you gotta be flat on those four on the on the outsides and then I just fill in then it's an easy fill in. Okay? All right? Then I need to find the foci. Now this the for the foci on an ellipse, C is gonna be the distance from the center to the foci. C squared is going to equal the absolute value of A squared minus C squared. Okay? So that's going to give me, in this case, 25 minus, tw minus 4 is going to be 21. So c squared is 21. So c is the square root of 21. Square root of 21 is not simplifiable, so we leave it like that. Which way are the foci? They're on the longest axis. They're on that major axis. So in this case, they're left and right. So the foci here then would be at, I take the x part of my center, and I add and subtract to it the square root of 21, and I leave the y part alone. If this were twisted up 90 degrees, then I would add and subtract it to the y value of the center, because my foci would be vertical. Okay? Questions on that? Here is another one, okay? Um, find the equation of this ellipse. Well, again, first thing that you're going to do is you're going to find the center. So the center is one, two, three, and then down two. So that's going to be at negative three, comma, negative two. Then you count. One, two, three, four, five. So this distance here is five. This distance here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the formula for an ellipse, or the general equation of an ellipse, is x minus h quantity squared all over a squared plus y minus k quantity squared all over b squared equals 1. So my ellipse, the equation of my ellipse here, Based off of all of that, 
would be the quantity x minus negative 3, so that's x plus 3, quantity squared, divided by what? No, 25, yep, because it's left and right, it's underneath x's, plus quantity y minus negative 2, divided by, now it's 64, and that equals 1. And that's the equation of that index. Okay? What we are going to do now is we are going to take a formative. I am going to give you 15 minutes to do said formative. So I will, everybody's going to end the formative no matter where you are at 25 after. All right, so Friday, we're looking ahead or ready for Friday. Remember, because of the assembly, uh, we shut down classes at 1 o'clock. Okay? We are going to be doing notes on Friday because we only are missing, I think, two classes. Okay? All right, so we're giving the majority of classes, so we're not going to just stop for the day. So if you have one of those classes that meet after 1 o'clock, I don't remember when the Mr. Ross classes meet. It might be uh, 16, 17, yeah, 16, 17, and 20, 21. If you have those with Mr. Roth and have off at one of these other time frames, come to one of those other time frames. Okay? If you can't, because you don't have off in one of those other time frames, I will be posting a screencast on its learning. You will be required to watch that screencast before Tuesday. Okay? All right? So, so that's, and there's going to be, there actually is this weekend too, there's going to be videos that you need to watch over the weekend too. So, just so you're aware of that. Okay? So you'll just have extra videos to watch. Okay? Yeah? So, Today, we're going to start talking about the fourth conic of four. There's four conics. We handled the circles right away on day number one. We dealt with parabolas. We've been dealing with ellipses the last couple of days. Now, we're going to go to hyperbolas. Okay? So, if I click, click, clickety click on that, okay? uh, I don't know if I can... So a hyperbola is a conic section that can be thought of as an inside-out ellipse. Okay. Truthfully, okay, the hyperbola, so remember an ellipse was where we took the sum of the two distances. Okay. So from distance from a point on the ellipse, to the two foci, the sum of those two distances was always the same. Here now, the hyperbola is for any two given points, which we call the foci, the hyperbola is the set of all points, that's what locus means, set of all points, such that the difference between the distances to each foci is constant. Okay? So now, what this is saying is that this is saying, I don't know if I can write on here or not, but so this doesn't have the foci on it. But so like the foci was, would be right there. So the distance from here to there, and the other, oops, actually no, the foci wouldn't be there. The foci is inside. Duh. Okay, there's my two foci. So the distance from there to there, and whoa, that kind of didn't work. Whoa. Wow. Yowie, wowie. And the distance from... I guess I got to pick up, a, pick up a, different, a different color. And the distance there. That, 
if we subtract those two distances, that's what's constant. Okay? All the way through. We subtract here now on hyperbolas. Okay? So, there are two different kinds of hyperbolas. There are vertical hyperbolas and there are horizontal hyperbolas. The difference is between a vertical and a horizontal one is which variable comes before the subtraction sign. Okay. So if x comes before the subtraction sign, or I should say x squared, really, comes before the subtraction sign, then it's a left and right. If y squared comes before the subtraction sign, then it's up and down. Yeah. Again, just like with ellipses, the first thing that you're going to find is you're going to find the center, h comma k. That hasn't changed with any of the four conic sections. H comma k is the center in a circle. H comma k is the vertex of a parabola. H comma k is the center of an ellipse. H comma k is the center of a hyperbola. Just like with ellipses, A, because notice that A is always underneath the x term, always underneath the x squared term, A is going to be our horizontal distance. Okay? B is going to be our vertical distance. Okay? So let's dive into what a hyperbola is, where we can find it. Love the lampshade example. If you've ever been in a darkened room with a lampshade and there's not a lot of stuff around in that room, okay, it makes a hyperbola on the top above the lampshade combined with below the lampshade. It's pretty cool, actually. Okay. The planetarium in St. Louis is in, uh, in the shape of a hyperbola. Um, sonic booms are, are in the shape of hyperbolas. Hourglasses. But really what it is, what you really use hyperbolas for, is for like radio signals, GPS, all that fun stuff. That's where you're going to use the most of with hyperbolas and such. So they are used a lot in the real world. Okay? So, this is a hyperbola. Yes, indeedly do. I know it's a hyperbola just from looking at it. So if I'm looking at a, a conic section, and this is what we're going to get into on Friday. If I'm looking at a conic section, I know that this is a hyperbola based off solely upon this right there. If I am subtracting the squared terms, the only one that I subtract on is a hyperbola. So if I see a subtraction sign of the two squared terms, it's a hyperbola automatic. Okay? If I'm adding the squared terms, then we got different characteristics, and we'll go through that on Friday. Okay? So the first thing that we need to identify is the direction that this one's opening. It's either going to be an up-down or a left-right, vertical or horizontal. And we're going to need that later on in the problem. Okay? So x squared comes first. That's a, that's a left and right parabola, or excuse me, hyperbola. So in this way, left and right. Okay, so this one's going to open to the sides. Okay. Second thing we're going to do is we're going to find, just like we've been doing in all of them, we're going to find h comma k. Where is the center of this hyperbola? Three comma negative two. Love it. So now you picked up a piece of graph paper when you came into class today, because we're going to actually graph one of these, or if you have got another piece of graph paper out there and you want to use that one, whatevs, 
But that's the first thing that we're going to do, is we're going to graph that center point. So if we said that the center was at 3 comma negative 2, I'm going to go to 3 comma negative 2, and I'm going to put a C. Okay? Because I'm going to put a C, because the center is not actually on the hyperbola. That's why I don't put a dot there. Okay? The only one that I need to put a dot on would be the vertex of a, of a parabola. Okay? Now, with hyperbolas, we have to do some construction. And okay? we're going to build a box around our center. And inside of that box, is, or that box then is going to lead us to graphing a hyperbola with ease. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to build a box around the center. We look underneath the x squared term, take the square root of this number, and that's going to be the left and the right sides of my box from the center. So I look here at 9. I say, well, 9, I take the square root of it, that's 3. So I'm going to go 3, 1, 2, and 3 left, and 1, 2, and 3 right both directions, but I'm just going to put a little dash for right now, okay? because I don't know how tall I've got to go up on my box yet. Okay? So that's all that I can do so far. Okay? Bring you back up to speed. So we're at center, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, and then we went 1, 2, 3, and 1, 2, 3. Now, what I'm going to do is now I'm going to look underneath the y squared term. And that's going to tell me the square root of that is going to tell me how much up and down I need to go from my center. So the square root of 16 is 4. So I'm going to go up 4 and down 4. That now will allow me to, and I'm going to lightly do this. I'm not going to do this very, very heavily with a lot of letter, ink, or whatever you want. I'm going to lightly draw in a dashed box. <coughs> Excuse me. There. And I can fill back in now my horizontal, or my the left and the right sides. So there's the box that we just created. Now, if this were an ellipse, our ellipse would fit inside of that box. But since this is a hyperbola, it's going to go outside the box. So the very next thing that we do is we are going to draw in the diagonals of this box because that's going to be the hyperbola's asymptotes. So again, draw them in as dashed lines, and then we're going to find their equations. So if I draw them in as dashed lines, I believe that is the color that I'm going with, so I'm going to go from here down to there, Now you have it easier because you can extend it all the way across and all the way across. We can go even further down here. Yeah. We forgot to do our uh, equations of those. So now if I'm thinking about these, I'm thinking, okay, y equals mx plus b. This box is nice because it has a side on the y-axis. That's nice, okay, because then you know the y-intercepts. 
So for this particular one, we'll call this asymptote number one. Actually, let's go in with the proper color. We'll call this asymptote number one, and we'll call this asymptote number two. So for asymptote number one, I have a y-intercept right there of one, two, three, four, five, six. So that has a b value of negative six. It has a slope. Now, it went through the corner of my box, correct? It also went through the center of my hyperbola. So the slope here is up 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1, 2, and 3. So that has a slope of 4 thirds. So my first asymptote would be y equals... 4 thirds x minus 6. My second asymptote has a y-intercept right there of positive 2. It went through that corner of the box and the center, so I went down 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1, 2, 3, that gives me a slope of negative 4 thirds. So that one is going to have an equation of y equals negative 4 thirds x plus 2. Now, let me scroll back up a little bit and see if we can get this all in the same shot. There it is. Perfect. I love it. Notice something about the slopes of the asymptotes. What do you got, Jeff? Uh, the, the slopes are opposite for number one. One's positive and one's negative. I love it. What else do we notice? Liz? They are not perpendicular. It has to be opposite reciprocals in order to be perpendicular. Correct, Logan. Okay? But that's good. That's, I get that one a lot. I get that they're perpendicular a lot. But that's not the case. What else are they? Next person. <laughs> she doesn't know how to describe it. Next person. What else do you notice about them? Look at the original equation. Oh. So what? Are, so what is it? It's plus or minus. Not the square root of b. Square, well, what's the square root of b squared? B. Okay, so it's the plus and minus b over a. Yep. Okay. Down here. Okay. Little side note action here. The slope of the asymptotes is always going to be plus or minus b over a. Okay. Always. And they always go through the center. From the from the original equation. A is always, a squared is always underneath x. Remember? Let me go back a little, let me go back a little bit. A squared is always underneath x. B squared is always underneath y. Because if you think about how we built our box, too, we built our box from the center, we went up B, and we then we went left and right A. We went down B, we went left and right A. So the slope is going to be plus or minus B over A of those diagonals. Okay? All right? Next. Next thing, as long as we're here, we're going to identify the two vertices. Now, the two vertices are going to be the midpoints of the boxes, of the sides of the box that we just made. Remember, we said at the very start that this hyperbola opened left and right. Correct? So I'm going to look at the midpoints of the left and the right sides, 
and that's going to be my two vertices. So I have a vertice there and a vertice right there. Okay. So the, those points are 0, comma, negative 2 and 2, 4, 6, comma, negative 2. Now, the cool thing is, is now I can draw my hyperbola. Because my hyperbola is going to... What? Because <coughs> it's three more past the, past the center. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then down two. All right, you what four? I got a four in the slope. Not for the vertices. Oh, yeah. Okay, right? Now I can draw in my hyperbola. Okay? It's going to go through this point. It's going to come up, and it's going to hug that asymptote. It's going to come down, and it's going to hug that asymptote. It's going to come here. It's going to come down. It's going to hug that asymptote. It's going to come up here. It's going to hug that asymptote. If it were an up-down hyperbola, then we would have had vertices at the top and the bottom of the box, and we would have had a, looks like a parabola up top and a parabola on the bottom. Okay. So let me give me a second here to copy all of this over. So there's my hyperbola that we just drew. The last thing that we need to find are the foci. Okay? The important formula for the foci is this. In ellipse, it was absolute value of a squared minus b squared. Here, it's a squared plus b squared, so we don't have to worry about having it be an absolute value. So basically with foci, it's the, what is that? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Pythagorean theorem. That's Pythagorean theorem, yeah. Okay. So a comes, a squared is below x, b squared is below y, c is going to be the distance from the center to the focus. Okay. The foci for a hyperbola are inside the curves. Okay. So, with that being said, in this case, a squared is 9, b squared is 16, so 9 plus 16 is 25, so c squared is 25, square root of 25 is 5, okay, so we go plus or minus 5, but remember c is a distance, so really it's just 5, okay, and since we are left and right, we are going to add and subtract that 5 to which part of the center? We're going to x because we're going left and right with it. Yep. Okay. So we add it to the x part of the center. So the foci are located at 3 comma or 3 plus or minus 5 comma 2, which we can actually do that math. So the two foci are at negative 2 comma negative 2. So that would be right here. And at 8, comma 2, which would be right there. Yes, ma'am? 
draw the draw the hyperbola. Okay. To recap, to re go over the steps again. First, determine which way it opens. That's like step zero, figuring out which way it opens, because everything after that is based off of that. Second, find the center. Third, go what's underneath the x squared term. That's going to be the sides of your box left and right from the center after we take the square root. Fourth, vertical, what's underneath the y squared term. Square root that. That's going to be the upper one. Draw your box. Draw your diagonals of the box. Those are your asymptotes. Find those equations. Okay. Then draw in your find your vertices, left and right side of the box, top and bottom of the box. Draw it in. Find your foci. Okay. There's a lot of stuff that goes on with hyperbolas, which is why we saved it for last. Okay. It's not very difficult because it's all basically the same, except the foci formula changed a little bit. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, that is a great spot to finish off in because we'll start with that one tomorrow.